Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right, so the score was 122 111, and the Lakers got the victory against the Phoenix Suns at home. Everything went well from the free throw line. We were definitely able to get there over 37 times. I think we hit like the over 30 of them, so we're definitely pleased about how that ultimately contributed so very much to our score. Um, one thing that I can say I didn't like is how many offensive rebounds we gave up. I think we gave up about 12 or 11 offensive rebounds, something like that, as a team. So we want to, um, you know, kind of make sure that we're not giving up second chance points so much. But other than that, it wasn't a whole lot not to like, man. Honestly, it was a whole lot to love. Um, 26 points, 11 assists, 12 or 13 free throws, I believe, was the stats there for Austin. Definitely stepped forward and had another monster game. All-star Reeves at it again. Uh, D'Angelo Russell, I think he had like 25 points. He had two blocks, a steal. Uh, I don't remember how many assists. I think it was like eight assists or something like that. Another big game for him. So I'm very glad he was bouncing back after having some bad games since coming back from the injury. But he, he definitely came through tonight and made his presence felt. Uh, you know, uh, who else was out there, man? Anthony Davis had a pretty solid game. Bounced back. I can't say I remember what his stats were. I wish I did. It's just gone blank for me, but I definitely appreciated what he was ultimately able to do. A big-time hammer dunk on the inside. I felt like he really went crazy in the third quarter. I think he walked out of there with probably over 15 points in the third quarter alone. So this was a big bounce-back game from him. Uh, Vanderbilt had a big game. We had some nice plays down there from him, even though we had a few turnovers that, that we could have you know, loved to have gotten back. I think he did a really good job. Um, just on both sides of the floor, helping Devin Booker, you know, or rather helping against Devin Booker by defending him very well. He still got his 33 points, but there were seven steals, uh, seven turnovers attached to Devin Booker's stats that we definitely appreciate. And Vanderbilt, I'm sure, had a lot to do with that. Um, so this this was one of those type of games, you know, you, you really appreciated that you just got big play out of your players. I think it was three players with over 20 points. Anthony Davis, I believe, had 24 it was like 24, 25, 26. I think Austin had 26. D'Lo had 25. And I think AD had 24. I think that's how they went. 24 for AD, I believe. Um, so, you, you know, that's what we needed. You know, big play from everybody. Uh, guys chipped in. You know, I think it was Vanderbilt had like 13 points. Fantastic uh, lob catch at the end. One-handed lob check catch that uh, Austin Reeves gave him. Uh, a few things stood out from this game. First of all, I remember finding myself in the first quarter kind of a little frustrated because we always roll the ball on the inbound trying to conserve time, even sometimes when it doesn't seem like we need to. And if and I was saying to myself, you know, this is going to catch up to us one of these gay days. Where somebody's going to catch the ball when we roll it like that. Some, one of these defenders is going to be quick enough to get to it. And it happened. It happened. It was a situation where Anthony Davis had picked up a very – Bad touch foul on Devin Booker. I don't even know why he was out there like 30 feet trying to guard Devin Booker. He had, he had, I guess he had made a couple plays for himself and was feeling a little excited. I don't know. But he picked up his third foul. I think it was probably about two minutes or so to go in the third quarter. At that time, coach subbed him out. We were down. We were up by about, I think, 10 or 11 points. As soon as we subbed AD out after that bad foul, we ended up giving up seven straight points because we ended up having a situation just like that where Winion Gabriel did that little ball roll thing and the Suns were close enough to catch it. They got it. They dove on top of it. We were able to make a play in transition somehow that turned into a three-point play. And, of course, that inbound had come off of them making a shot. So it was a seven-point switch, basically. And so you find yourself with the and one there, um, you know, and then giving up the points, then the pain after that. It, it, you know, just very, very easily, um, you know, finding yourself just ultimately knowing that that hurt you. We got, have got to switch it up sometimes. We can't be so very systematic that every single time we're rolling the ball, you know what I mean? Or, or certain situations just got to make sense for what it is we're doing. Um, so that's really what I'm trying to say, man. Let's, let's just tighten up. You know, we got to win these games. You don't want to be, you know, careless with inbounds. Uh, but, you know, like I said, it wasn't a whole lot to point out in a negative light. We just sound, found ourselves shooting so many free throws. You know, we were attacking them a lot in the first half, uh, driving at the rim, and they were whistling it every time. You know, you got to give credit 
the guys like Dennis Schroeder and Austin Reeves and D'Angelo Russell, uh, who were just intent on continuing to do so, and were successful. Um, they just fouled entirely too much. You look at the foul total, I think the, the Suns probably fouled over 36 times, something crazy. Like It was really, really nuts how many times they sent us to the line. Um, let's see, what else was there to say there? I just really like the aggressiveness of Anthony Davis in the third quarter. You know, we've talked a lot about that all season long. We've had issues with him getting the ball in the third quarter, particularly in the first half of the season with the smaller team. And um, I thought this was one of the best examples that we've seen of him stepping forward and doing what it is we always ask him to do, which is be aggressive and, and look for the ball. Catch it in, in spots that you're comfortable with and, and, and be aggressive. And he did that tonight on the offensive end. So I'm really pleased with what I saw from Anthony Davis just overall from a, a rea reaction, you know, to, to what it is that we've been giving him, which is a lot of hell for not showing up and, and, and playing well. Uh, or even showing up for the for the Rockets game, however people saw that. But at the end of the day, this was a big bounce back game for just about all of the guys who've been struggling. Even Malik Beasley was able to hit a couple threes tonight off of the bench, which I think was a very very welcome adjustment. And as we could see, it worked out just fine. Um, you know, at the end of the day, man, I thought that Austin Reeves played fantastic, but he could have played even better. You know, there were moments in the time in the court in the first quarter or second quarter where I felt like he was buying into the hype so to speak and doing too much and that's something he's going to adjust to you know just like anybody else who steps into their stardom there comes a time where you understand that now it's time for you to do more but what does that actually mean you know what I mean does that mean you got to take the ball off the dribble a little more and try to drive into you know the teeth of the defense a little more it's like you know what does that actually mean I don't think it means anything at all for Austin Reeves. I don't think he should change anything. What got him here is what will get him home. And I think the usage, will, the, you know, the overall confidence that his coach has will instill in him going forward will just overall give him more opportunities and doing more of what was already working. I don't think he has to try to do more in any way other than what has been uh, on, on tab for him. So I like the step forward. I like that the team has finally given him an opportunity to embrace uh, the the. The, the the overall um, you know success of his style and his and, and of his play I guess is what you could say they're allowing him to get some minutes because he's playing well and he's doing what we need him to do with those minutes coming through and helping the team win so I thought that that was a big part of it he led the team in plus minus today and uh, once again you know he was the leader of the team I hate, I hate to do this to AD because I'm not trying to pin nothing against him but you just got to respect the fact that two straight games Austin Reeves the best player on the floor. It is what it is. Two straight games, two victories. And so for us to have issues, you know, trying to get wins and things like that, trying to find consistency, uh, him coming into his own in this particular part of our season is, is just, just what the doctor ordered. Um, you know, so that's what I want to say, man. I just continue to have confidence that we're, we're on the right track with this young player and uh, letting him go will be something that we should not allow to happen. So, yeah, that that's the thought. Um, Rui Hachimura did not contribute tonight, and it, I don't think it was really his fault. I think he's just gotten drowned out on the depth chart, and I don't think it's the greatest thing in the world. He was 0 for 3 tonight, and, of course, not no other contributions, really. And I don't think he had over 15 minutes on the game, so I don't know. You know, um, that's not something I'm pleased with as a fan. I don't think he deserves that. But at the same time, you know, I tell you, it's just like I said in a video before the game. If he falls in love with the pass and starts making plays for others, he'll be much more of an asset in this league. Not just to this team, to any team. But as long as he lives and dies with scoring and scoring only, when them shots don't fall, it's not about that only. It's about what else did you accomplish on the floor to help your team. And if the answer is nothing, then that's how many minutes you're going to get. So that's what I tell him. You know, you got to find ways to contribute in other areas. If it's just about your shot falling and you pulling down boards, believe you me, there's other guys who are going to do more and they're going to get the playing time. It's the same thing I say about Malik Beasley for doing things correctly. If his three-point shot ain't falling, he can't give us no more than three rebounds, four assists. Or, excuse me, four rebounds, no assists tonight. You know, that, I don't need that in the starting lineup. I need people who can do a bunch of stuff in the starting lineup. And because we have a bunch of players who can do a bunch of stuff, it makes no sense for us to be having guys who only rely upon one or two, you know, columns on the statute for them to be successful. That 
they got they got to find ways of helping their team better. So that's on Rui, and that's on um, our coach overall to just put him in positions to to succeed, and the coaching staff to continue working with him on how to improve uh, his overall meshability with this basketball squad. Um, I think using him at the three makes a lot of sense. I don't think you phase him out of the lineup just because you can't find him any minutes in for him at the four. That's not how you do that. What you do is you mess around with the shooting guard minutes a little more and put him at the three. Austin at the two. You know, you, you float around. Troy at the two, whatever works. You know, a lot of times we lean on Troy. He had a nice couple of sequences in the first half, but disappeared in the second half. I was kind of surprised by that. I thought he was going to play well. In the second half, and the minutes didn't really come there, and the game just kind of flowed away from him. But and that's the kind of thing where it's like, all right, those are minutes. If you, sh- if you, you know, shift him around and Beasley around, you got two slotted s- spots to give guys. You know what I mean? You could slide Rui at the four. You could slide Max at the three. Rui at the three, rather. Or, you know, different things. Lonnie at the two. There are different things we can do, but because we're leaning on what we're leaning on, 20 minutes of Malik Beasley tonight, which wasn't horrible. We played pretty solid off the bench with those minutes, but it's like, if I'm judging by how Lonnie was able to play, it's, no, Lonnie didn't play at all. It's like the three or four straight games, no Lonnie Walker. It's like, why are we acting like Lonnie is not an asset? Why are we acting like we couldn't trade him at the trade deadline for a second round pick or something? Like, this is absolutely a coaching mistake. It's a coaching mistake, man. And so Malik Beasley, I'm happy you were able to hit a couple shots tonight. The four rebounds, you know, for sure. But we all know that we have players who can give us more that we're just not giving any consideration to. And I don't support that as a fan. I don't. I want to see those guys get playing time. They're better than that. And so that's just, you know, we won. We're happy we won. We definitely needed to win. Uh, this is two straight wins for our squad, having beaten Orlando and the Phoenix Suns. Uh, so we definitely are on the right track. I didn't get a chance to look at the standings after the game, but we took care of our business, and that's all we could really control. Um, and look, that's what it's about. You know, we, we desperately could not lo- have lost this game. And it was a little close at times during this this little stretch here in the fourth quarter. They had cut it to one. I don't know that they ever got the lead in this game Um down the stretch I don't think they did but they definitely cut it close so you got to give Phoenix their credit in the presence of so many foul calls going against them they still found a way to keep this game fairly respectable without two of their best players in Aiton and Kevin Durant um so you know Devin Booker those seven turnovers you'd love to have those back but I think we did a good job putting defense on him and for him to still walk away with 33 I think he had like 14 in the third quarter as well he and AD were going back and forth big in that third quarter Got to give credit to the superstar DB. And if he had all his horses out there, it would have been a different story for sure. Um, so, yeah, man, I think we were one step closer to having Bron back. This is the type of win that, it, that will get you a chance to see the King back in uniform. Um, simply put, we just need to better our odds and, and buy ourselves more time to continue to stay mathematically in the mix. And I think it's easy to say that we did what we need to do tonight to make that happen. With nine more basketball games left, most of the teams we see left, we see twice, which means it should be much easier for us to strategize against some of these squads. Uh, Two Utah games, two Chicago games. uh, You know, there's uh, another Suns game coming up, a Clipper game coming up, a Thunder game coming up. And uh, that might be it. I think that might be it. Maybe one more matchup somewhere that I might have forgotten about. But that is what we're looking at. That's the the gist of the situation. Next up is OKC and Shea Gildress Alexander. The Jalen Williams twin, so to speak, even though they don't they're not related. They got the same names. Um You know, we are we this is the game that I have circled as one of the toughest games we'll have to see for the rest of the season. Uh because I think that much of what they have right now and how well they're playing. And uh Lou Dort. People are, are saying the Dorcher Chamber is back. He plays defense, man. He's locking people down. So if if we thought tonight was just as tough as it gets, I don't think anybody was fooled to thinking that. But if you were, uh, think again, because we have some dog fights ahead in order to survive. And so I thought the Lakers played solid. I think, you know, I, I don't think I have much to complain about at all. I think we did what we were supposed to do. 
I think it played into our favor, and I think we walked home a victor. I think the the thing that I look at and I say the only problem is I don't know that we get those calls every night. I think there's a good chance we drive the ball the same way we did tonight and half of those calls don't go our way. And if they don't, um, we would have to make up what we were doing in other areas. I think we walked away with 50 points in the paint. Can't be upset at that if they get into the line and end up with 35 points coming from the line at that situation. So that's obviously very good. Three-point shot, I think we shot over 40% which is solid as heck. And we didn't really attempt many. I think we only attempted 17. So when you, given the fact that you were attempting so many layups and getting to the line so well, you definitely love the fact that you attempted limited shots from the behind the arc and was able to have a good percentage and still walk away with a du- double-digit victory. So it's a lot to like there, man. I think we had 14 turnovers to their 17 or something like that. I don't think we were doing too bad turnovers. You don't want to turn the ball over that much. Uh, but that's not that's not too much, I guess you could say. That's that's about as far as you want to take it. 14 is about the max. Um, so, yeah, I think we had a really solid floor game overall. You know, the team shot okay. I think Anthony Davis uh, getting into his motions, catching the ball, you know, closer to the basket in certain situations. I thought we did a really good job of just making sure that he was – a he was able to kind of attack some of those lesser bigs that they had out there. Uh, Biombo had a pretty big game. I want to give him his credit. He was all over the place, blocking shots, rebounding stuff. I told y'all he would have a, a big impact on this game, and he did. Um, Landry Shamit hit some shots for them. Uh, Cam Payne hit a couple shots. You know, they, they, they had some contributions, but it was mostly Devin Booker out there trying his very best. And, and of course, you got to give Chris Paul credit for also getting in the scoring column, hitting two threes, I believe. I think he walked in there walk away with like 18 points or something so he, he you know he understood the assignment he had to make up for the scoring uh with eight and the kd out and uh i thought i thought cp3 played a really good game so yeah man that's what it is lots of los angeles lakers get the victory because ad d vando um obviously uh austin ds getting to the line all of that stuff contributed quite a bit to our success Winning Gabriel did some good things down there. Uh, so, you know, it's, this is the type of win where you just say we, we took advantage of a team that normally we would have had a very, very tough night against if they would have been healthy. But, you know, we take these type of situations where we can get them. It's the type of break you need when you lose against the Houston Rockets and you, you lose a game just the Timberwolves and the Knicks and all these different thing, games that you expect to win. And you turn around and then see the Phoenix Suns and they're missing half of the starting lineup. Uh, you just feel like that's a blessing from heaven. You got to take it <laughs> and you got to appreciate it. And we, you capture the win and you feel good about yourself. So that's that's exactly what that was. Uh, we're not foolish to think that you know they're the best version of themselves tonight. But we're gonna we're gonna enjoy this victory and appreciate it just the same. Um, let's see. Was there anything else to mention in regards to that? Monty Williams out there he did some pretty good things. Of course, you got to give credit to both coaches tonight. Normally, I kill the coaches, but you know. When you start Austin Reeves and it works out, uh, that's all we really ask you to do. There ain't much else really to complain about. There's not too much going on wrong. Uh, of course, we want to try to find a way to use Rui Hatsu more. And as I said, Max Christie and Lonnie Walker not playing is, is, is a crime. But all in all, we, we're doing the best we can, I think. And, and I think the, the, the result of what we saw was good effort. Guys bouncing back. Guys understanding the urgency. Uh, guys not getting too down when... The game started getting close. We started blowing leads. We had a 10-point lead, blew it all the way down to one, and didn't panic. We did not panic. Uh, we forced turnovers, you know. That's what I want to say. The defense was much better tonight. And uh, we're already a pretty good defensive team by the numbers, but I thought the eye test was much more. Um, they, they passed that tonight, and we were happy. Uh, Austin Reeves getting 11 assists, man. I want to double back to that. Him and D'Lo, for me, it's definitely a front, a backcourt that I can believe in, man. They make each other better. It was a situation where Austin Reeves got him, got a chest pass to, to D'Angelo Russell. He hit the three. Next quarter, D'Angelo Russell got a chest pass to Austin Reeves. He hit the three. Like, these are the type of things I just know. When you got two point guard minded players down there that are both 6'5, 6'6, and they can both basically do point guard stuff and shoot the three. You got a dangerous backcourt right there. The length is there. The continuity's there. They're making everybody better. They're making each other better. 
this is something we can lean on for a couple years down the road, not just the end of this season. We're talking about the future. D'Lo and Austin Reeves need to be kept together. They need to just get, get used to each other, get to know each other very well, because y'all going to be stuck together for a while if it's up to me. I'm telling you right now, they're going to be stuck together because I just I know what it is. When I look at this team we're about to see in OKC, the one thing that comes to mind to me is the fact that they literally got three point guards on the floor at all times. Jalen Williams, baby Magic Johnson, that's a point guard. He's a six, eight point guard. I'm telling you, the dude is a point guard. Josh Giddy, exact same thing, a six, nine, six, ten point guard. And then you look at Shea Gilgis Alexander, we know exactly who he is superstar all the way around and definitely can get a bunch of assists every single night so for me that's what it is that you're trying to 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 compete against is the type of um togetherness that a team like okc is going to ultimately grow with when you have three pass first score first combination players down there that are supremely huge you know what i mean and you can look at a guy like um of course this does is irrelevant because he's not going to be back to next season but a guy like chet holmgren you throw into the mix with that and you can understand why OKC is probably going to be a contender in a couple of years if they're not already there right now. So this is a game coming up that we have to have D'Lo and Austin Reeves continuing to do the things that we're talking about against that other team because you best believe they're going to do those same things for one another as well. And so that's what I'm looking at. Guys like Isaiah Joe, Lou Dort, um, you know, they, they got a heck of a squad over there, man. We cannot play games with them. Aaron Wiggins. Yeah, that that is definitely a squad. And so, again, we've made the switch away from Beasley. I think it's the best thing for us. We saw how it worked out tonight. I think that's more. There's more where that came from. Um, so that's that's what I want to say, man. I just love the idea that we got those two guys down there. They're gonna make everybody better. And that is not a dynamic we've had very often. Uh, given the fact that we've had some issues with that, with kind of having. LeBron, LeBron James and Russell Westbrook having been such fantastic facilitators but not necessarily being best to be on the floor together with one another you know what I mean is that kind of thing Patrick Beverly wasn't really built for that type of continuity and length and stuff like that so you just didn't have that dynamic you know even when we were winning championships that wasn't necessarily what we had although Caruso definitely provided that dynamic for sure Caruso obviously you know he, could, he has point guard skills but you know, guys like KCP, that wasn't necessarily his game. So you didn't really have a backcourt that just was flowing in such a way to where two guys could walk away with double-digit assists and double-digit points. So I, I'm super excited about that. I look at what they got down there. And, uh, you know, with DeJounte Murray and Trey Young, I think we can kind of emulate some of that. They they have that type of dynamic in a way. So I just think that's the future, man. You don't, you don't need just one point guard. You need two, basically. And so... um I think we're jumping ahead of that with Austin Reeves and, and D'Angelo Russell, and, and I, I think we should try to lock those guys up together. Keep them both. Uh, don't let either one of them leave. Um, so that's what I want to say, man. Hopefully we can make that make sense financially so that our team can can really flourish in the future. And if those guys are, are on board with what we're doing here, uh, I think they're going to end up being very happy as Lakers. So that's, that's what I want to say, man. I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm much more excited. I was already excited about that, but because we hadn't seen Coach start them two together and we didn't really see them together very much since making the trade for D'Lo, it was kind of something that just kind of got lost in the midst of all the different scenarios and things you want to see. But that's one of the most important dynamics of our team, the future backcourt of D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves. And then you add LeBron James and his pass first ability back into that situation, and now you see a situation where Anthony Davis has three facilitators on the floor getting him the ball at any given moment and i didn't even mention dennis schroeder who's going to be coming in doing the exact same thing we're going to be very dangerous as it pertains to assists if anything we should lead the league in assists in the playoffs if we make the playoffs because i don't know that any other team has as many shot creators as we have on this floor playmakers for others that we have on this floor rather guys who are going to get past this two people and make them better rhythmic plays timing stuff that should just make us play a much more beautiful basketball t uh, style than we've seen ourselves play as of yet so i'm telling y'all when lebron james gets back we got austin reeves capable of getting 11 assists d'angelo russell capable of getting 11 assists the passing and the scoring that we're going to get from our team when this team is fully healthy 
uh, I don't even think we're ready for that as it pertains to we're used to our team being like this. And when we had LeBron James, he wasn't a part of this team. He didn't have the low, you know, he didn't have Austin Reeves playing at this level. So I think LeBron James is coming back to a brand new squad, uh, especially if we keep Doug Austin in the starting lineup. This is a new team, and he's going to be able to score more with this team. It's not going to be as incumbent upon him to make assists happen for others. He can look for his own three-point shot a little more because guys are going to be making the pass to get him the ball from all over the court, from every position. He has a passer getting him his rhythm shot. So he and AD, I'm telling you, their they're scoring and their efficiency usage in theory – based on what it is I'm thinking about, should go up. They always have multiple playmakers on the floor to get them the ball and for them to get the ball to as well, who can score. So, yeah, we're we about to be dangerous if we can just get everybody healthy and uh, just continue to save ourselves as, as we uh, try to make the play-in tournament. Because that's really what it's about. Even though we have a really uh, confident bunch and we like what we have, we still must win basketball games to save our playoff lives. Uh, so, that's the urgency, man. It's, it's not a situation where we can just win a couple games and breathe a sigh of relief. We must be urgent and, and really, really intent on uh, being winners in every game over the next nine games. So that that is that is the thought. That is the mindset. And, and I'm very encouraged, man. As I told everybody, us fans, I, I speak for myself and everybody who thinks like me. We're not afraid. We're not afraid of what we're dealing with here. We understand the stakes. We've been in many, many pressure situations as it pertains to playoffs and game sevens and, and play in tournaments, stuff like that. This is not something that should rattle us as a team or as a fan base. And if it is, then we had better grow some thicker Mamba skin because we have definitely got more pressure times ahead. And that's what it's all about, you know. So I hope everybody has gotten their head right. Everybody that has to, you know, find their confidence. I hope this win helped with uh, that and we can move forward and continue on the path to glory because we are the Los Angeles Lakers and that's exactly where we're headed um, and I won't I won't settle for otherwise I, I do believe this team at the end of the day uh, we're, we're at the at the mercy of our coach in regards to certain choices he makes but if he's listening and, and it seems like with the decision he made to start Austin today we, we got some we got a breakthrough there I hope he liked what he saw in making that decision. I hope there was nothing about that that made him regret it because we certainly don't regret what we saw in the victory. And it looked, it looked good, man. It looked good, you know. And, it, and it's worth experimenting with things that we're afraid to experiment with if what we're trying to do isn't working. And so I think the Austin Reeves starting lineup experiment was obviously a success. And the Malik Beasley coming off the bench experiment, I think, was a success. Um and so that's 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 basically the thought, man. And for me, I just wish it was a situation where I didn't have to push Malik Beasley aside in order to show appreciation to guys like Max Reeves, Max Christie, and um, <laughs> Max Reeves, Max Christie, and Lonnie Walker. That's who I'm thinking about. It, it shouldn't be a situation where I got to keep bashing Beasley and his weaknesses or whatever it may be, uh, so that I can can fight for Lonnie and, and Christy to get on the floor when they really truly deserve to be out there anyway. It's not like these are scrubs that we're talking about here. These are legitimate players that could probably give us a lot of production. And so I feel like just like I fought for Lonnie, for, for uh, Winion Gabriel earlier in the season to see if he get on the floor and get some playing time, I feel like I gotta do the same thing right now for Lonnie Walker and Max Christie because they're not being evaluated properly as it pertains to how they're used versus the stuff that they've proven. Um, and then we see the inverted opposite with so many different choices that Darwin has allowed us to, to have to endure um, where other guys who are playing poorly aren't extended that same respect and it does not sit well with any of us <laughs> I mean any of us man I'm, I'm paying attention to Laker Nation and they all share the same sentiment I have we just want to see the guys who are playing well get to playing time man that's it and so that's why this game was so important because it showed us that if we step away from some of that stuff that Darvin really, really believes in and step into some of the stuff that we've been screaming about while complaining, we really will get the result that ultimately Darvin's looking for when he does the stuff he believes in. So please, my friend, step away from those beliefs and step into our conversations because we're giving you stuff that we know will lead you to glory.
play the players and refuse to <laughs> play them, man, and play them with confidence because they will give you the production that you think is not there. I'm telling you, Darvin, it's all on you, brother. You're the last thing in the way of us getting 18, in my humble opinion. I ain't going to lie to you. The only deficiency we have left is our coach. Everything else can be managed. And with him starting Austin Reeves, it's one step in the right direction that we can definitely appreciate. So that's what I got to say, man. Good win, L.A. A must-win situation. You met the expectations, and I'm able to relax, A.D. I'm able to relax. You put forth your effort, led us to victory, along with Austin Reeves, who's stepping forward. Along with D'Angelo Russell stepping forward, Vando stepping forward. All our guys who needed to step forward today and bounce back had a bounce back game. And we're in the mix because of it. So that's what's up, L.A. Welcome back to the play-in tournament. I'm pretty certain we're back at 10th right now, depending on how everything shook out. I think we're back in there. And so that's what I got to say, man. Keep winning. OKC is going to be a heck of a task. Do not take them lightly. The building is ours. Let's get the victory. BF44. Thank you all for watching. Oh, one more thing. Game ball. I never gave the game ball to anybody. I think it's safe to say that this game ball could have gone three ways. Obviously, you love what D-Lo did. You love what AD did. You love what Austin did. My gut's telling me give it to Austin. So I'm going to do that. But I, I, I want to give kudos to AD for just meeting the pressure of the day. All of the pressure was on him to show up. All the pressure was on him to play well. And he told us to relax. If he would have came out here and played horrible, there was no way we were going to relax. So that's what I want to say. I think Austin gets the game ball just overall for being the, the two-day superstar. You know, two days, he's been a superstar for us. You know, I call him all-star threes when he's hitting shots. All-star all thieves when he's stealing the ball. We're going to have nicknames for this dude that that's gonna you know be long as as, as our championship list so <laughs> get comfortable austin you're a laker buddy bdl 44 i thank you all for watching i'm out